Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin. I'm Julia Cosby and these are the headlines. Protests at the Freedom Convoy 2022, despite dwindling numbers, continue to congest the streets of Ottawa. The assault and rape of a woman in New Delhi by 12 people sparks outrage. Top-level talks continue as a threat of Russian invasion in Ukraine continues to loom. The international community is accused of failing to act as violence continues in Myanmar. One of three men wanted in a disturbing child sex abuse case in the Philippines is living in Winnipeg. Eliminating COVID-19 lockdowns receives bipartisan support from Ontario politicians. British Columbia extends aerial wolf culling for five more years. Officials estimate that 200 to 300 wolves will be shot each year. February 1st marks the Lunar New Year of 2022. To begin, Canadians across the country watch while the truckers' convoy continues to protest in the nation's capital. Although the number of protesters have been dwindling, many residents have continued to complain about the disruption that the protests have caused, specifically horn blaring. Although the protests are being held in the downtown core on Wellington Street in front of Parliament Hill. Turning now to India, 12 people have been arrested for the rape, assault and parading of a 20-year-old woman in New Delhi. Videos of the incident have gone viral as crowds are seen standing and observing the brutal attack. Allegedly, the married victim was attacked by the family of a 16-year-old boy who claims that he killed himself after the victim rejected him. The incident has caused outrage in India and has reignited conversations about gender-based violence within the nation. As it stands, the woman has been moved to a government shelter and her family has been given extended security. Meanwhile, diplomatic efforts have been employed to ease the foreboding situation in the Ukraine. Specifically, officials have been engaged in high-level talks to avert the threat of a Russian invasion into Ukraine. While British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has met with Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky, Zelensky, Russian President Vladimir Putin has met with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. At the same time, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Russian Minister Sergei Lavrov are to meet via phone in the foreseeable future, though Russia claims that they do not have a plan to invade Ukraine and they have gathered in upwards of 100,000 soldiers around the Ukrainian border. In Myanmar, February 1st marks the one-year anniversary of the military coup in the nation. Since then, the brutality and atrocities committed by the military have escalated. Where tear gas and beatings were once a weapon of choice a year ago, now the military has resorted to burning down villages, shooting targeted individuals, and air assaults. In total, it is estimated that 1,500 civilians have been killed since the coup began. A group of politicians removed from office by the military a year ago called the National Unity Government has accused the world of doing nothing but just sitting and watching as the people of Myanmar suffer at the hands of the military. In other news, one of three men connected to a notorious child sex abuse case in the Philippines is said to be living in Winnipeg. According to the search warrant gathered by CBC News, Marshall Ruskin allegedly wired thousands of dollars into the dark web, thereby funding child sexual abuse videos, including a series, Daisy's Destruction. In 2017, one victim was shown a photo of 12 males and she identified Marshall Ruskin as one who she was forced to perform sexual acts in front of via Skype when she was 11 years old. Winnipeg police seized evidence found on Ruskin's electronic devices in 2019, but have been unable to get into them. Since then, they have continually applied to hold on to these devices while they work to chip away at the security measures Ruskin put on them. In Ontario, all political parties within the province seem to agree that lockdowns as a response to the future COVID-19 waves should be avoided. Premier Doug Ford has reiterated the desire among Ontarians to move beyond the pandemic and return to life as usual as the province reopens many businesses to 50% capacity. Nonetheless, opposition party leaders caution against the Premier's implementation of arbitrary end dates to public health measures. As it stands, the Ford government has set March 28th as the end date when most public health measures will be lifted including mandatory masking in indoor public spaces. In other Canadian news, British Columbia has decided to extend a controversial wolf call for another five years. This means that the province will shoot wolves from a helicopter in an effort to reduce the population of the predator. The reason for this is that the larger wolf population has allegedly led to a decline of caribou populations in Kootenay, Caribou, Omnica, Skeena and Peace regions in BC. However, 
Many have criticized this move, arguing that hundreds of wolves will be killed because of greed. These critics point out that the caribou populations are threatened because industry continues to utilize backcountry and wolves are being used as scapegoats for this money-hungry choice. Lastly, the Lunar New Year is one of the most important celebrations of many East and Southeast Asian cultures. Unlike the Gregorian calendar's New Year celebration, which is a one-day celebration, the Lunar New Year is often celebrated for multiple days. This year, the Lunar New Year began on February 1st, and it is the year of the Water Tiger. The Water Tiger comes up every 60 years, and it represents strength, bravery, and a clearing away of evil. That's all for today. Thank you for tuning in to the News Bulletin at Inc. TV. I'm your host, Julia Cosby.